Is this the pair that you can actually, oh, whoa. This is gonna get crazy. So in this video, I have two pairs of sneakers. It's literally the same shoe, just two different colorways. I honestly was uh, just trying to get one of them and then ended up hitting on Nike sneakers on both pairs. And then of course, right after that drop, they became available on Nike's website and they had a full size run of both. I'll link them in the description as I think there are some sizes left in this peculiar looking model, but here we have it, dudes. Uh, this is a really interesting one and one that I definitely wanted to get my hands on the first images I saw of these. Do I regret it at the price point? I, I feel like I definitely do. I'm being honest, like straight out of the box, it's just such a weird shoe on feet. It kind of reminds you of like a Ninja Turtle shoe. It kind of really looks like a Ninja Turtle shoe, the way the scoring is on the outsole. Anyways, this is a Nike ISPA Link. This pair of sneakers is a weird one, man. It is definitely one of the most interesting and odd duck looking shoes that I have uh, ever seen as well as tried on. And the combination of what you get on feet is is not great. I don't I don't know really how else to describe it, but it's not bad. Um, it's innovative in a sense, and I like the the direction that Nike goes with a lot of the innovative stuff that they create because this space uh, specifically for ISPA is kind of supposed to be like a reach, and and so I get that buying the product. I know it's supposed to be a reach. I know it's not supposed to be like mainstream, uh, the daily trainer or the daily everyday shoe that you're going to be wearing. It's one that's just kind of testing the waters of, of what the Nike is able to create. And so again, it's called the Nike ISPA Link and they retail at 225. You can find them in the description of the video if you're trying to buy a pair of them. Uh, but here is what they say about the shoe. Don't get puzzled, zero glue, two pieces, and a whole lot of comfort. Constructed with interlocking components, the ISPA Link was designed for disassembly and with the intent to use as few materials as possible. Spotlighting comfort, it places you directly on top of an ultra soft foam midsole. The engineered knit upper keeps it airy and lightweight while the booty-like fit gives your foot a hug with every step. Get going and keep going, it's easy as one, two. A shoe reborn. Built to disassemble, the design features interlocking components that can easily be taken apart. Showcasing how the shoe uses as few materials as possible. It has a dual density midsole which your foot sits directly on top of, delivers increased sensation and unbelievable comfort. It has a unique lacing system which is engineered to help keep your shoe from untying. It has no sock liner but has pull tabs for easy on and off. And for those that didn't know, ISPA stands for Improvise, Scavenge, Adapt, and Protect. This is the philosophy at the forefront of Nike's revolutionary ISPA initiative, specifically crafted to overcome the urban environment's most challenging obstacles. From the weather to the tough terrain, the ISPA is on the mission to engineer sophisticated sophisticated solutions to your everyday problems. So that is kind of like a backstory of what ISBA and uh, what these shoes offer. And so if you read about that and you, you kind of hear about that, it sounds kind of intriguing. The crazy thing to me is the fact that it says that you could decouple this. Is this the pair that you can actually, oh, I think this is actually pair, the pair, whoa, this is gonna get crazy. This pair, you can actually remove the, uh, the upper. Okay, this is, this is so bizarre. It actually comes apart. I totally did not know that this is the model that actually comes apart and you can see the outsole is completely separated uh, from the upper of the shoe. I remember seeing images of these a long time ago and I was intrigued, but I didn't realize this was the actual product uh, that was coming too. I also know there's like a Nike Air version that has a crazy like rainbowy sort of look to it that has a removable uh, outsole from the upper as well. This actually kicks it up a notch. Just makes this a little bit more of an interesting pair of sneakers. Not a very functional one though. Like at what point are you gonna actually decouple this? And um, I don't know, what are you gonna do? Like mix and match them? I guess you could take it apart this one and then put the red bottoms on the black if you really wanted to. I'm not opposed to stuff like this though. The technology aspect of it and the mixing and matching of the uppers is nothing new. In fact, I have some old basketball shoes like the Nike Morphs that had like Jason Kidd and Pippin and uh, well, who was the other one? Gary Payton? They had three different upper shells and outsoles and it was a drop-in booty you would drop in and actually zip up. I have two of the three pairs, but it's a really cool concept. It wasn't really functional. A lot of times you would just slide out of the booty uh, of those shoes. So it wasn't like probably the best, but I like the idea of it being able to have like an interchangeable shell. But here's the crazy part is you have a functional pair of shoes that is right here and just the shell and then a removable outsole midsole that you can actually probably do some mix and matching too. If you had different versions of the upper, if you have the same exact outsole 
uh, and then just change up the upper, you could actually make this something where they could have like a, a new revision every year and you can get different colors of outsole tractions or or maybe even make it so you can kind of piece your parts together like buy different uppers like this for part of the cost or just buy different outsoles if your outsole goes bad i like the innovation actually behind that i think it's kind of cool uh is it something that i would personally use i mean i have a lot of shoes as you guys know so for me it's not really like one that i'm gonna be like oh i'm gonna wear these all the way to the bone it's just not as functional for somebody that has a bunch of different sneakers but for an everyday person which is kind of like my mindset most of the time uh, like I could see that having some value in something like that. The weird thing for me though is originally when I got these shoes I looked at the insole and I was like what this is so weird there's like holes on the uh, insole of the shoe and it's pretty soft and squishy I don't know what the proprietary uh, foam is it didn't say it just says it's a dual density however it is nice and soft and squishy but uh, there's like these weird holes in here and I actually tried them on the first time without socks on which was a no-go like this is a shoe that is a sock like fit but you have to wear socks with it which is kind of like counterintuitive in my opinion they really need to like have something that you could put on top of this maybe an also a removable like uh insole that goes over top of this just a really thin one where you can actually put it down over top of this and wear it uh, without any shoes that would be i think the next level of innovation is just removable things on the inside so again you can make that sock like fit really just truly like a sock like fit and actually not have to wear socks my right, foam density on this thing it's like a 24 to a 27 foam density it's pretty soft and squishy uh to the touch actually which is kind of nice you don't notice the soft squishiness at least i didn't as much as i thought i would uh because it is pretty low profile and you are very very close to the ground as you already know it's just like a midsole outsole uh that has a softer amount of foam on the inside but it's a little bit firmer foam around the collar of this section here and so when you put it on I did notice you know I have a little bit of a wider foot so this right here is just not wide enough for my foot and so it was a little bit firmer and a little bit like hard on the uh, like outskirts of uh, the uh, the insole so other than that like I felt it was a little bit uncomfortable just because of the width of the shoe uh, but minus that it was actually pretty cool once you got it on your foot it is difficult to get on because it is a sock like pair of sneakers so obviously you have to you know hold the functional pull tabs pull it on and stuff and I think that obviously if you do that it's a much easier uh, option to be able to get on your feet. I do like the different knit patterns of the upper as well. I mean there's a whole bunch of different design elements to the knit upper. I think that that's pretty cool how they did that. I also do like the reinforcement for some of the lines. You can see the blue on this one has the lace holes uh, right here that uh, the laces are kind of integrated in and then you do have some radial spots here for laces as well and then around the pod you could see it's like double knit uh, so it's extra thick around uh, the uh, midsole sections of the shoe you also have some nice reinforced rubber uh, plastic material I guess on the toe caps of the shoe with a little bit of dimension to it uh, kind of looks weird but honestly I like the fact that they added in there it just is nice to have some extra reinforcement and then you do also have some extra reinforcement on the heel uh, done in a nice suede material now the laces are something kind of special as well they're made so that they don't untie and they're done in this really weird ziggy zaggy approach and it was really bizarre like it's stretchy but it's also something that uh, when you tighten it down you definitely have some grip there and I, I like the design of it it's not something I've seen uh, before integrated in any other sneakers that I've tried that doesn't mean it's not something that's out there but I personally don't like to tie my laces though so I found it kind of just an interesting zigzag sort of approach uh, and I kind of like it. It looks different and it's very unique. I didn't realize it was going to have the grip and the lockdown that you'd actually get from these laces. So I like that they called that out in the notes. Now the overall fit, I guess I would say it is true to size. It does feel a little bit snug, but it's supposed to because it is that sock like fit. Uh, true to size fit me, but as I mentioned, just the width of the heel was a little bit too narrow. Uh, and you know, I don't love the compression of this top section here of your foot for the most part. Usually it's a little bit too snug with sock like sneakers since I have kind of a wider uh, foot right there as well. It was comfortably enough that I could wear it through the day and it was just fine, didn't cause a lot of irritation. But all in all, it is exactly what it says. I mean, it's a sock like fit and uh, the knit on it is actually pretty nice uh, as well. So is it worth 225? I mean, I would say no, just because like it's pretty minimal materials for what you're paying $225 for. However, you're also paying for the Nike ISPA experience, which is like kind of like a, again, the whole like trial sort of uh, pair of sneakers where this isn't like for every single person out there. It's just something a little bit different and something that they're creating uh, with uh, purpose. And I, I like that they are doing that. And there's gonna be some people that like sneakers that are drawn completely to that. I'm one of those people 
uh, from the beginning. Like anytime I go to the Nike employee store back in my youth, like I would always look for the like the most innovative pair of sneakers. It didn't matter if it was hyped up or not. It didn't matter if they had a full size run of them or not. It was just something that I was interested in. Uh, seeing different technologies, seeing different ways that they can redesign something as simple as like leather and rubber on your foot. Like it's it's crazy how um, like they can just like keep coming up with really, really original takes on uh, footwear. So I like the fact that they have something different out there. Uh, you know, what? I thought originally this was going to be more of a negative review, uh, but now that I've had the shoes and now that I've seen them outside of their element, literally, like I feel like this is just like, again, you have to appreciate the innovation between what Nike and the ISPA lineage is doing. And then once you kind of have that appreciation, is the shoe functional enough for you to be able to wear and so on? Yes, it's functional to wear. It's not the most amazing thing on your feet for 220. I mean, if you want something soft and squishy and amazing, I'd get the Invincible Run or the Invincible Run 2, which is actually coming out now pretty soon. So I should have a review on those coming soon. Otherwise, if you just want something out of the box, out of the ordinary, something innovative. This is not a bad option, just the price point at that 225 is uh, a little bit rough. And I imagine if they end up sitting, they're gonna drop in price eventually, but it's one of those shoes where it's like, you wait for them to drop in price, they might not have you size, or you just pay the piper, get a pair, and then call it good. Now, I did get two of them. I'm not really 100% uh, sold on having both pairs. I'm probably gonna end up returning this one just because I like the black one a little bit better. But the one thing that I'm tempted to do and I don't want to do because I know I'm gonna like it is do the red bottoms on the black ones. I'm gonna do that and go, okay, I have to keep both of them. But uh, I'm curious actually what would happen if I swapped them onto the black ones and then return these with the green bottoms instead and to, to see if anybody would actually even notice that I swapped. I don't think anybody at Nike would even notice because I think that the average person taking these in for returns probably doesn't even know this is a removable outsole uh, from the upper. Maybe I should try that. I'm, I'm not, I don't know, we'll see. I feel like this is gonna be really difficult to get back on. Um, I'll leave a comment, like I guess following up in the comment section, whether or not this is a big pain in the butt to get on. I'm gonna go with a yes, because it was a huge pain in the butt to take it off. So I can imagine only, I mean, it's really like, putting a square into a circle sort of thing. It's not an easy fit uh, because it stretches so much to just be able to have it uh, be like uh, a single item. But anyway, that's my thoughts on the shoe. I think it's it's cool. It's not worth 225 unless you're really wanting something innovative. And then at that point, uh, you have to just pay it out there like I did. Uh, and I don't regret it to keep one. I'm not paying 450 for both though. I'd rather just have one. But also if you guys do want to buy a pair of them, I will link them in the description over to Nike. Uh, so uh, go check that out if you guys are interested. But have a good one. Hopefully we'll see you back for some more videos. All right, peace guys.